Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Bonjour Tristesse by Francoise Sagan. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, which is super short. Then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I'm imagining this will be quite short and sweet, because it's only about 120 pages. But uh, I will say it's very beautifully written. I don't know how much I can credit to the translator and how much um, is obviously Sagan herself. Um, but she was only 18 when she wrote it as well, which is really good. I mean, you, I wish I could write like that when I was 18. Um, the Sunday Times actually said, this is not just a remarkable book for a girl to have written. It is a remarkable book, absolutely. She is marvellously gifted in a very condescending way. A remarkable book for a girl to have written. And to begin with, I was like, that's really sexist, but I think they're referring to her age as well. Um, I'd like to think so anyway. Dane reads. A book that comes straight from the heart of a girl involved in a dangerous game to wreck her father's plan to remarry. So um, we have the biographical notes here. Uh, by 1959, this had sold 850,000 copies um, in France and abroad. So I just want to read the opening, para uh, opening paragraph here again to give you a, a feel for the writing style. I also love this little line as well. Um, I soon noticed that he lived with a woman. It took me rather longer to realise that it was a different one every six months. That'd be like me. I, I don't notice people. A strange melancholy pervades me to which I hesitate to give the grave and beautiful name of sadness. In the past, the idea of sadness always appealed to me. Now, I am almost ashamed of its complete egoism. I had known boredom, regret, and at times remorse, but never sadness. Today, something envelops me like a silken web, enervating and soft, which isolates me. Just an interesting little line. This gives you a lot of insight into the characters here. Although I did not share my father's aversion to ugliness, which often led us to associate with stupid people, I felt vaguely uncomfortable with anyone devoid of physical charms. Their resignation to the fact that they were unattractive seemed to me somehow indecent. Hey, I can't help being unattractive, mate. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm only resigned to it because I'm a realist. So there's a line here that made me chuckle. Did you sleep well? Asked my father. Not too badly, I replied. I drank a lot of whiskey last night. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> I thought this was relatable because I find it hard to sit still. She stood there looking straight at me as she spoke, and I was horribly ashamed. She was one of those women who can stand perfectly still while they talk. I always needed the support of a chair, or some object to hold, like a cigarette, or the distraction of swinging one leg over the other and watching it move. And we get this very judgmental line. How strange it seems that with a face like hers, she should be such an adventuress. Also a needlessly gendered word, but I suppose... This was back in the day. Plus in French it probably is uh, gendered. We get used to the word laughingly, which always annoys me. I like this line. One gets used to other people's faults if one does not feel it's a duty to correct them. And uh, she goes to meet Cyril and we get, I kissed him passionately. I even longed to hurt him so that he would not be able to forget me for a single moment all the evening and dream of me all night long. I could not bear the thought of the night without him. Sounds like cuteness aggression, which is when something's so cute it makes you angry. We get this little exchange, which I enjoyed as well. I thought you might like some coffee. How do you feel this morning? Very well. Well, I answered. I'm afraid I was a bit tipsy last night. As you are each time you go out, she began to laugh. But I must say you were amusing. It was such a tedious evening. So yeah, those are all the bits that I wanted to highlight from Bonjour Tristesse. Overall, it is, it's a very human novel. Um, it's almost like a parable in terms of there is definitely a warning to it. It's up to you whether you have that reading of it, I suppose. Oh, very cool. Um, but yes, I just thought it was really movingly written, very beautifully, you know, beautiful language. Very impressive for an 18-year-old girl, um, or woman, should I say. And uh, I would like to read it in the original French one day. I think I might find it... Um, I don't know, I might be able to read it because, again, because it's such an everyday novel, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of, uh, like, language with, like, specialist terms. Like, you might get with, like, say, sci-fi or something that I wouldn't get because it's set so heavily in our real world. Um, and I don't think it's really aged either. I mean, when was this written? Let's see. Yeah, first published 1954. And this could easily, this reads easily as though it could have come out five years ago or something, you know. So overall, I gave Bonjour Tristesse by Francois Sagan a four out of five. And I would recommend it. Uh, it's held up as a kind of a modern classic for a reason. And because it's so short as well, you know, what have you got to lose from reading it? So there we have it, that's what I made of Bonjour Tristesse by Francois Sagan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.